Uh, but no, what I was saying was one of the things I like, you know, the Drew Barrymore things coming out, this, there was a Jimmy Fallon article that came out. I saw. That was people that worked for the show that were basically like, he didn't do anything illegal or anything, but he was just shitty to work for. Um, I, s- I saw the Seinfeld thing, though, and I'm like, this is exactly what I suspected. And the fact that Seinfeld came out and said it makes me feel like I hate stories like this. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm just like, you can so easily twist whatever you want into anything oh, now. Oh, sure, yeah. And the fact that he's like, they're like, yeah, so he really chastised us in front of Jerry, and Jerry had to step in and tell him to apologize. And Jerry Seinfeld's like, that completely was a bastardization of the actual truth. Right, yeah. I'm like... I'm like, it hurts the credibility of the story so much to me. Right. Because they named a person and then the person was like, I don't support this. That's not what happened. Yeah, yeah. That I'm like, I, I do, th- I th- I worry about stuff like that, about the idea of like saying something to someone and they laugh about it and you make a joke and then 10 years later, they're like, that joke is real. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you responded by laughing. It's very difficult to, yeah, I hate that stuff. It's yeah, very it's, weird. To me. It is, it is tricky. And I think often a lot of it can come out to, come down to like that fa- the Fallon article to me just smacks of like they were able to cobble together enough people that were willing to go yeah he, he's hard to work for right and gave examples and then that's the story yeah uh I don't I don't know I think I think there's some element of merit to having that but also not me it too. also feels TMZ ish that's yeah. that's how I feel uh it's it sucks yeah it's it's this trickle down thing where they're like but we got these big bads, Cosby mm-hmm. and Weinstein. It's like, then we got these little bads, Aziz Ansari. Uh, we were having sex and I changed my mind and he asked me for a blowjob. But this was okay. This wasn't okay. That's like, now Jimmy Fallon mm-hmm. in one of the highest stressful jobs in entertainment is very stressed. Yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah yeah, 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 we know. Yeah. How, how about Lorne Michaels? How's he doing? Yeah. Any, any stories? For, like, But I will say this, like every time something comes out about late night. Yeah. What I appreciate is in my Twitter timeline, my feed, I see a lot of people like, hey, I'm just going to take a moment while this conversation's happening to remind you of this very cool thing that Conan did. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, it, there's always a story about Conan doing like the opposite of the shitty person thing. That's fun. It's always great. Like, I, I can't tell you how much I thought about Conan O'Brien this weekend, listening to some podcasts. Yeah. And, like just... I was having a taking Conan a shower too. Yeah. That's it's that's so interesting. He, like so, basically, multiple times in his podcast, like people have written in and asking question, ask questions about doing the job or what he likes the most, what he likes the least, whatever. There's a story he keeps going back to, or not even a story, but a point, which is always he's shocked how many people are successful and bitter mm-hmm. and not. Um, appreciative for what they've achieved or what they have. Yeah. And he's like, and that's one of my main goals in entertainment is to never become bitter like that and to consistently be appreciative of what I have. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, with Conan's show, his contributions to the Saturday Night Live, his contributions to the Simpsons, I'm like, is there a better comedian? You know what I mean? But that's why Conan, I was talking about this with a friend of the podcast and also a close friend of mine, uh, Lee Leshen. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was talking, because he came with me to Conan when I I did the show uh, with my close personal friend, Conan O'Brien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... uh, (laughs) Of course. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, God, it's Conan again. (laughs) (laughs) Stop being bitter. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) He's on you. (laughs) It just says you up. (laughs) Time difference, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Time difference. I yes. Know. <laughs> Send. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, his, uh, He's up as well. It's, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, the old saying about drapes and carpets and things? <laughs> nope. Hardwood floor. Hardwood floor. <laughs> There's nothing. It's just... 70s shag. Wow. <laughs> Woo. Uh, but no, I... Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> so dumb. Um, but no, I, I, I really appreciate him so much because I was having this kind of thought. And when you talk about, like, is Conan, you know, like a comedy icon kind of guy, here was my my thing I was thinking about because there's always these stories that come out with Conan. Like, uh, during the first writer's strike, he paid his writers right. for the whole strike, even though he wasn't using them. And he, he did the thing of being on the show with no writers, right. uh, all that stuff. Um, and during the Leno fiasco uh paid out of pocket for the crew to continue making money yeah um which is amazing and it's stuff that like he did and just did it yeah and wasn't like 
let me do this for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me drop off food to the strikers while I know cameras are around. Yes. Yeah. These donuts are for you. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, but I was thinking about the, uh, the idea of late night and what it used to mean and how that's going away, right? right. And has gone away. Uh, Carson, Johnny Carson, had The Tonight Show. And The Tonight Show became the thing. Yes. But everyone called it Carson. Yes. When a comedian did Car- late, uh, t- The Tonight Show, back when it was a world-changing thing to do. Right, yeah. You did Carson, did well, you had a career. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they always referred to it as, I am doing Carson. Yes. I was on Carson. Right. Johnny Carson's name was the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He left. Leno took mm-hmm. over. People would say, oh, I, I, I did Leno or right. I'm on Leno, only because it was like shorter than saying The Tonight Show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Leno left and everybody was like, well, whoever takes over, it, it will be The Tonight Show. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now Fallon, you say Fallon, but you mean The Tonight Show. Yeah. If, if he leaves that, he doesn't leave that indelible mark. Yeah. I think the three of us are supposed to, we're in talks to take it over. That's a thing yeah. that we haven't we haven't been able to say, but uh, well, we were originally going to step in and have a nice handing passing of the torch yep. from James Corden. Yes, and we Ooh. had a sit down. Yep, in a car. Yeah, and he wouldn't stop singing. He just kept going. Ah, uh, and it's just uh, Mister Brightside on a loop. <laughs> I didn't. I, didn't yeah. I, I know you're going to get to a point, but I didn't tell you. I told Brad <laughs> that's, my idea. That's the name of this podcast. Yeah. Uh, the idea of I came up with an idea of like, man, what if we did a live? I, I would love to do a live episode at the Comedy Connection the weekend of Rhode Island Comic Con because they have so many comedy people coming this year sure, for some yeah. reason. And I was like, it'd be so fun to do a live podcast on like the Sunday night. I think Bobby Kelly is headlining Thursday through Saturday, and I was like, it would be so funny to do a late night setup. With a huge desk with three chairs. Oh yeah, <laughs> isn't that, that so yeah, funny? Three people yeah. behind the desk. <laughs> yeah, that's I like such that a lot. Funny idea. Yeah, that's great. So three continue. monologues. <laughs> yeah. uh, At that's the same fun. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a trilogue. <laughs> trilogue. Yeah. yeah. They did try. Yeah. <laughs> Two of a lot. Two of them did. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> but uh, that trilogue became a dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so the next one was Letterman. Yeah, Letterman had his show, which was called the the Late Show. Yeah, well, it was with late, David Letterman. late late night, late and then, night. Yeah, yeah, and then the Late Show. Okay, so, yes. Oh, I see. Uh, but Letterman was the next person that was their name. Yes, and it didn't matter what show they were doing; it was Letterman. Yeah, and yeah. you did Letterman. Conan was the next one. Mm-hmm. He had uh, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Right. Then uh, the Tonight Show for a moment, then back to Late Night with Conan O'Brien. I think no, he left. I think yeah, he, just he left, left Conan, and he yeah. just took off. And then TBS. after traveling and doing live shows and stuff, then he came back with Conan. Yes, because his name was enough, right? For sure. And when I say name, I don't mean fame. I don't mean you know they're in every household. You know that kind of thing. I mean the level of like respect and like the the stamp of approval that that name comes with yeah for sure and i think in stand-up comedy terms with late night shows you know i i've talked a lot about this with other comics uh you know because i did conan and i did conan because that was the one that i wanted to do that like the, yeah i looked at the landscape and i was like he's the last like late night guy that means something to me mm. and uh and because of his comedy history he has more comedy credentials going into a late night host than any of the other people even He's, letterman or, or carson for sure you know with the simpsons and snl so it's just natural and doing conan that feels like you know even 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 though it was on cable, it was TBS, right? right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't NBC. It still holds something that means a lot to me. Oh, yeah. As a comedian. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. So, yeah, it was a weird thing of like Carson, Letterman, Conan. That's it. Those are the, those are the, the, the names, the Rushmore names on Late Night, right? I, yeah. also, I also think Conan has... Arsenio. Really, like, taken... Magic what, Johnson. Like, like I, do, I do think that, like... Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. I think he's an incredible host for a late night show. I think he's very talented in multi different I directions. I think he's one of the best summer camp counselors I've ever seen in my life. 
<laughs> I think that, uh, since he took over the show. Yeah. And I don't even mean it as like an insult. I think I just mean it as this is my read on it. He's a camp counselor putting think, on the variety show I think at like, the end of the summer. When I saw him do, uh, he did Cecilia with Paul Simon and the Blue Man Group. Mm-hmm. I was like, and it's not comedy at all. It was just like legit performance. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like Fallon rules. Like, like even the type of comedy that they did, I loved it. Sure. I, I love when they first started and they were doing, they had Alicia Keys come on and do the Gummy Bears theme song. There's a ton of stuff that was great. Yeah. But Conan has taken the world of improvisational comedy mm-hmm. to a different level with what his show was. Sketch comedy and improvisational comedy. Sure. Because the sketches were incredible. But also, like, what he does now on his podcast, which he's been doing for a couple yeah, of years yeah. now, it's, like, his level of attention to detail and, like, hitting a punchline whenever it's needed to, like, like to, like, a five-star response is outrageous. Like, I listen yeah. to a ton of podcasts. I work with a lot of comics. I, I'm in the world of podcasting all the time. It's it's incredible, his batting average. It's It's wild to think that, like, as a child... My first time going to New York was my grandmother taking me there. Uh, and uh, she, uh, whatever. Um, sorry. Robbed, I hit her, I she hit, robbed a bank and did. you were the getaway driver. She but you were so bank. short that your feet couldn't hit both pedals. <laughs> yeah. like, we've all seen the Brinks The Brinks truck went yeah. through the tunnel. Uh, sorry. No, my grandmother passed away yeah. very recently. And so I had a little hitch of emotion that happened of course, right there. Yeah, of course. Uh, because I tried to cover it up with comedy. Thank you. That's what he does. Uh, that's what I do in my life. Yes. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, I, it's very strange. The, 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 uh, my grandmother was, I, from what I understand of other relationships that people have in their families, because my family was my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother. Mm-hmm. I think my great grandmother, my relationship with her was like what a lot of people have with their grandmother. Right. And my grandmother, my relationship with her was very close to like motherly. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like she was like a second mother. So the, the pr- grieving process of this has been very weird. Oh, yeah. It's very drawn out, it's taking forever. Um, and uh, it's weird, uh, and I'm living in it. And I mean, sorry I, about that. Yeah, I I, I don't know Bummer that, stuff. I apologize. I don't know that grief has a prescribed limit of like, well, the grandmother. No, I know, yeah. I know. It's just very, it's very weird. Like I, f- I feel like you know the five stages of grief. Yep. Uh, you think with that it goes in that order, yeah. but it doesn't. No. It's just no. like oh, and sometimes you go through them and then go back to a longer version of one of them. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I apologize. Uh, she took me to New York for the first time, and uh, we went past the NBC gift shop. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, let me go in for five minutes. I had like $10, and I was like, I want to spend this $10 oh, in there. Oh, yeah. Classic I, kid behavior. Yeah. And I looked around, and I looked around, and I grabbed a keychain that was Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Nice. Bought the keychain when I was like 10 years old, and unfortunately lost it over the years. Right. But like to then go do Conan was special. But the point of that is like that guy has been a comedy uh, icon or comedy like institution. Yes, that comes with like this level of knowledge, respect, and like you know that kind of thing for that long and hasn't become like an eye roll response. Right. Oh right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's well, crazy. He, he continued to evolve, which is yeah. a really interesting. I mean, even after the tonight show thing, which led him to a place where he was contractually not allowed to be on television. Yeah. And he made, he basically went on live. He did a tour and they made a documentary called Conan O'Brien can't stop. Yep. Amazing yeah. documentary. We went to the live show in Boston. Oh, that's great. The Wang Theater in Boston. It was awesome because it was also like his homecoming show. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of the content from the shows? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it was so good. He brought the Dropkick Murphys out. He got a trip up to Boston and he bought the bat from Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell tour. Oh, that's great. For the live show. Yeah. It was just incredible. And then obviously to to go over to podcasting, he's the perfect... He's the perfect person to be the bridge of the old school uh-huh. late night seven minute to ten minute conversation to bring this into yeah. like a full form thing. It's outrageous. Like no, he's I, he's I, that he is that last guy. He's the last guy that if he points to you and goes, "You're funny," like it means something. Yeah, you yeah, know like, what I mean, dude. And if someone said to me right now, like, "Who do you think is like the king of like improv and like being there and being present and killing it?" 
Thank you. Like, <laughs> we're like, both like, like to me, like Manzukis is up there. Like, cause sure. he's, he's kind of like yeah, a yeah, savant, yeah. but like Conan is to me the top guy. It, it's weird. Yeah. It's everything he says. What happens is he says, makes a statement. Someone with him makes another statement that, that tees up something and he knocks it out of the park. Yeah. 10 times out of 10 and that's sure. it's it's outrageous. Yeah, it's crazy. I and I also appreciate the level I think there's something to the idea of like Letterman pushing what late night was. Yes. and doing different and odd things and and playing with the medium and it like it feels alive. Yeah. Conan definitely held that as well and doing like watching Conan I, even as a kid, I'd be like, I'll watch until the first interview. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't interested in in you know celebrity interview right. stuff, but I was like, I want to see what he's gonna do. I want to see this weird fucking character that he comes out with. Right. I want to see the masturbating bear. You know what I mean? Just crazy, crazy stuff. You're like, ugh, the guests are Norm Macdonald and Courtney Thorne Smith. Well, nothing. Yeah, uh, nothing lasting will appeal. Here. Yeah, well, yeah. That was, that's amazing. Uh, I will say this. The only thing I saw I've seen since that kind of iteration that got me excited about the medium of late night Mm -hmm. was also on, was it on TBS? It might've been true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Was Chris Gethard's late night show. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Chris Gethard's, I missed that show. I really liked it. And when I watched, I watched every episode that aired uh, because it had been originally on like New York One, Mm -hmm. public television or something. Uh, or public access that show i thought genuinely like i'm in on the ground floor yeah me too on this thing that's going to go on forever yeah he had that ooh, what's gonna happen right now feeling for throughout sure. the whole show for sure incredible yeah and it fucking got canceled like I what know. the hell it, but know. yeah it was it was great oh yeah you gotta start the show yeah, oh that's... i was just gonna say real quick <laughs> two we quick, did it again two quick things uh from conan one in when uh, they were doing Hans and Franz, like Dana Carvey and Kevin Nealon, yeah, Conan and, and Robert Smigel, and yeah, the two of I listened them to that, yeah, were gonna make a Hans and Franz movie, and yeah, it was called Hans and Franz, the Girly Man Dilemma, which by the way, mm-hmm. amazing great, great title. title, yeah, and they did it as a mini series on his podcast recently because oh, the movie, never yeah, they got read made chunks of the script, yeah, be- because Schwarzenegger was gonna be part of it, yeah. and then he didn't do it to do something else that was like really big, like Last Action Hero or something like that. No, Last Action Hero, Hero had come out, yes, yeah. that's right. And he was like, No, I can't do it, and then can't the other, be self referential. The other thing is, so Paul Rudd would come, I'm on going and, to sleep with my housekeeper. <laughs> Paul Rudd would come on and do that, uh, Mac and Me thing, yeah, yeah. And Paul Rudd went on his podcast like mm-hmm, maybe two years mm-hmm. ago, and towards the end of the interview, uh, he was like, "Yeah." So he's like, "I've actually been working on this like audio drama, blah, blah blah." And Conan's like, "Really?" And he was going through the whole thing, and he built it, built it, built it. And he's like, "He's like, I actually have a clip." He's like, "Can we play it?" And it was the Mac and Me trailer, yeah, right. And listening to it back then, I'm like, "Oh, it's great that they brought this back. It's amazing." I listened to a recent episode. He's like, "People think that that was me." buying into the bit and saying it's okay let's just like bring it into the podcast he goes i had no idea yeah. yeah i had no expectation that they would bring a movie trailer into an audio medium and try to do this and that entire conversation was 100 percent real i had no idea he had set That's that up fantastic. beforehand right. and i'm like just just it's it's such an amazing playground yeah for that type of comedy which to me is not normally mainstream comedy. Right, right. That, that's a good way to, for me to like look at Conan, I think. Yeah. You know, Masturbating and, Bear, the, and all just the Will checking, stuff. He's still alive. <laughs> like, we've been talking about this in a eulogistic way. He's a, uh, he's, what, uh, what was that text, though? Oh. <laughs> not, only is he, <gasps> not only is he still we gotta alive. we got to say a couple more nice things. Not uh, only is he still alive, but I'm feeling the most connected to him now through the podcast oh, where yeah. he gets to talk about the things that he's done yeah. and his behind the scenes on monorail, which may be the best yeah. episode of the yeah. Simpsons all and these different things. to be clear too, like as a comedian, like stand up comic going and doing a late night show and having it be important to me. Yeah. Like you cannot have a better first experience of course, right. than of doing course. Conan. Of yeah. course. From the top down, everyone was happy to be there and welcoming. Right. Which is insane. Like having the guy carrying a, carrying a spool of cable walk by and go, hey, that was really funny. And keep going is like, that's crazy. Right. That yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. You know what I mean, oh, oh, so I mean remember when the three of us were on Ellen, how terrible that was. 
<laughs> that was rough. Well, you made a couple of off-color mm-hmm. Porsche mm-hmm. jokes. Well, we knew that the, the first lesbian kiss was going to air, so we tried to beat it by doing the first <laughs> gay three-way kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we, were all, and we were also like, no, not him. <laughs> yes. Anyone but him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I kept looking over at the Guinness Book guy. <laughs> Like that. Why with was the he stopwatch. there? Why was he there? With, well, he why did he bring a stopwatch though? To time the kiss, right? The, yeah, to make sure it was official. Anyway, yeah. our point is this: work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen. That's what he said. You fucking charlatan. Uh, no, but, but the last thing I'll say about it is like the I can't get I cannot adequately express the idea of what a stand up comedian views as like doing a Conan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so great to have done that. And like the freedom that they afford you, you talk about like just like going off the cuff. Yeah. Having the booker talk to me before the show and be like, hey, if something happens, just go with it Mm -hmm. and just play. Don't worry about time, which is unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. Because that time is the main driving force of doing a late night set. Right. It's the time. Uh, And just like now, you know, I don't hold to it very well. Uh, but knowing that, like, let me play like a little tiny bit. I don't love the set that I did. I was just too nervous. Yeah. But um, I, I appreciate that. And to this day, making him laugh. Yeah. When we were cutting to commercial. Yeah. Was like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. That took care of like half of not having a dad growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. all set. Right. Uh, so, of course, our thoughts go out to uh, Conan's family. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P. Conan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the funeral is going to be fun, I've heard. His, Paul uh, Rudd is doing the eulogy, <laughs> and he, ha- he asked for some uh, <laughs> video equipment. I, I don't know what that's going to be about. I'd also like to send out uh, well wishes uh, to Brad's OCD that is taking him over, distracting him severely, because he it. can't wait to open the show. I'd, yeah. You're, 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 I'm trying please, to, open. I'm, I'm trying to, well, you, open it, I'll tell you. Jackally. Go ahead, open. If you will. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fun <sighs> Bearable. I am Brad Rohr. I am currently and have been for the last 20 or so minutes Ray Harrington. I'm Charles Staten. Um, and I was going to say, uh, we, I'm, trying to ex- I'm trying to accept Brad as he is. I'm trying to stop. No, changing. you're not. How long have you been friends? I'm trying to accept him. And so the other day we went to a concert. Yep. And Brad said. It was the Wiggles? <laughs> Brad said. I'm trying to remember this accurately. So you tell me. He's this like, band is too he rough goes, for me. He goes, I'm going to get a hot dog between band number one and band number two. Was he text to speech? This is how he speaks. And, I'm uh, going to get a hot dog after <laughs> band number one and before band number two. And I know he was specific two. because he only had, had 11 hot dogs that week, so he hadn't hit his quota. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the food stand earlier than that, mm-hmm. and I said, should I get Brad a hot dog to be a good friend? But then I said, you know what? I think he would rather stick to his plan of getting a hot dog when he planned than having me bring him a hot dog right now. I got to stretch my legs. Yep. Well, that's uh, important. I got to stretch I got, my legs. I got to control my own condiments. Can I, can I, ask, can I ask you, which, by the way, were zero. <laughs> uh, can I ask you, what is the better choice for me to have done? I, it, it's fine. Uh, if you'd have brought the hot dog, that sounds like that sounds like I, I, the the wife is mad at you. It's no, fine. either one of them would have been fine. <laughs> either either getting the hot dog, it's 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 immaterial. Are you are you sure? You're hundred percent sure, sure I, that I, if I, I brought it to you, you wouldn't have some sort of no. I would have been okay with it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think the dog hots either way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. All right. I thought that you would rather stick to your plan. No. Much no, no. like this opening, it's like to me, it doesn't matter. If we joke around for a while at first, but you're just like, well, the I, don't, I, don't, comes I, first. I don't think it matters for a while, but I do think once you get into like, that's half of some podcasts, <laughs> yep. then that's when we're, that's where we're in, I'd like it, to get to know. the point where he opens and immediately closes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're getting closer to that. I like the idea of we do the whole episode and a bonus episode has to be released every week. That is it's just, just the by the way. <laughs> This we was yeah. fun bearable. So I'm trying to I'm trying to say Brad well, sometimes I think Brad goes, 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this for ten minutes. Then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and it doesn't actually. That's him explaining lovemaking in itself to a woman. But right I think, before, I think, I'm gonna be doing this for about ten minutes. I think there, then I'm gonna move to. There's this. no. There's no about. Even, even when there's <laughs> there's no negatives, if he sticks to that or not, doesn't affect anybody. The Guinness guy is there. <laughs> I think he'd rather stick to the schedule. It makes him more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, does. Even if yeah. there's no reason to just get to that schedule. Yeah. When we went to the concert, we had lawn seats, and it was like, ah, oh, do we want to look at merch? Do we want to look at food? I'm like, no, let's let's put our blankets down. Let's get a home base mm-hmm. first. Sure. And then once we have the home base, then we can do what we need yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, and then and then Chuck's like, all right, let's all go get food. I'm like, well, then we're leaving our blankets. We're losing our home base. Yeah. And you know, the the group next to us, somebody like went and sat on their extra blanket, and they're like, our friends are sitting there. And I'm like, this happens 40 seconds before Chuck's like, well, let's go, let's all leave, mm. and uh, let uh, ruffians and riffraff come in and take our home base. And then. <laughs> You're losing me. You're losing me. I was with you. You're losing me. Don't overexplain. You know. I thought the, when you when the sale is closed, stop selling. With, no. Since we were there sitting on the lawn an hour before the music started, I thought yeah. that the blankets were enough. Okay. Turns out they weren't for other people. Mm. <laughs> See, we started strangling each other. <laughs> was, Somebody put a blanket over the two of it you. It was a very itchy and scratchy moment. That's fair. Yeah. That is fair. Um, Which one scratched? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely him. Uh, for uh, but it's funny because this is actually a good segue because one of the things I wanted to bring up just for a little bit this episode, sure, is uh, another complaint about Brad. Is, no, it's uh, just the fact that I feel like this year I've been reconnecting with live music. Oh, okay. In a way that kind of went away from my life, largely due to COVID, right? And stuff for sure, and, yeah. Because of you know during COVID is when I made my move to New York. Yeah, and um, you know I also uh, broke up my relationship Mm -hmm. in uh, 2021. And so like, you know, it's less built in, in terms of going and doing stuff. Yeah. But this year it's like, we got to see Frank Turner and the interrupters. Uh, We got to see Goldfinger. I just saw, Wait, wait, what was the first band again? Frank Turner. Moo. We didn't say that. You get it? <laughs> it's uh, Interrupters is a different band. No, but do you get it? Yeah, oh, I now get it. I do. From the Interrupting Cow I got, Now I get it. I get it. I didn't initially. I have a nine-year-old. Um, that would have killed with him. But uh, we saw Goldfinger at the House of Blues. Cut all of that And out. Goldfinger blew me away. They were great. Amazing. And then, uh, and it's funny because their bassist, I know you don't really know about this, but their bassist is the lead singer of MXPX, mm-hmm. who is like another band that I grew up with. Mixpix, yeah. That had uh, that had he had me on his podcast when Senior Discount. Oh, okay, signed. Yeah. So it was like very fun to see everybody together. Yeah, it was Real Big Fish's horn section on tour with them, mm-hmm. who have been on our podcast. So it felt connected. And then uh, last week, I went to go see the Suicide Machines, who never tour, never come on this side of the country. And then we went to go see Simple Plan, Some Forty One, and The Offspring at uh, the Xfinity Center in Mansfield. It used to be called Great Woods, sold out. What do you think? I was shocked. What do you think the capacity is for Xfinity Center Mansfield? I have no idea. I have no clue. 20,000 people. Yeah. Which is bigger than Boston Garden. And I was, it was completely sold out. We were on yeah. the lawn. I, I grabbed tickets early in the summer kind of on a whim because they did like a $25 all-in mm-hmm. week. And I was like, well, if I don't go, I'll just, I'll just sell them or whatever. Yeah. We went. It was, just, it was just so much fun recently to reconnect with that part of my personality and it's funny because I think for a while I was like, well, I listen to music and I, I noodle around and I, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I still have this connection. But really being there really has been like uh, an emotional positivity booster for me. Nice. What, what do you think? Good, good. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's, we, we went to a lot of concerts over the years. Like we then, used to go constantly. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, getting back into it uh, post COVID, I guess I didn't, I didn't think of it in those terms, but. I mean, it makes sense of us uh, just, going to those shows. You know, we used to go to uh, smaller shows mm-hmm. uh, at, at more local venues, and I think we just haven't had the time to do that. Yeah. Um, and, you, and, and you've said in the past that you, you hate, like, independent stuff. Uh, yeah. You hate small I, I stuff. I only like want corporate. Roots, yuck, yeah. is what you've said. Give me, give me said, money roots. He said yeah. he doesn't want to see any bands that met organically. Yes. He's like only if they were put Assembled together by yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, yes. some sort of, uh, and he's also said uh, walking by the merch table, 
I'll get it on Amazon. Yeah. You, you said that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or and I'll they're, make they're, it myself. They're like, we screen, mm-hmm. we screen printed these ourselves. And he says, usually I have my own screen print. Yeah. Click. And he takes a picture. Yeah. And then I two, laugh. Two birds. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I laugh. Yeah. And I laugh. <laughs> two birds. Wow. But uh, I just remember after Goldfinger, I feel like me and you were like high fiving and running through Boston and like well, punching that's, signs, that's kick ska. flipping, <laughs> yeah. you know, doing doing fucking Madonnas. Yeah, but it's stuff been great. Like yeah. And one of the things that kind of came back to me that I forgot is I'm like, oh yeah, like you see a band that you're like, oh yeah, this band's okay, and then you see them live and you're like, I'm not personally like gonna start listening to them all the time. That band's fucking great, right? Like even right, though they're right, not yeah. exactly for me, because yeah. I feel like Simple Plan is kind of like to me from a later generation of pop punk. That's a little bit more saccharine and like their songs are very uh, just like a little bit like whiny-ish emo to me. They're right behind you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> seeing them at the show, yeah, they were incredible. They were great. I had the same yeah. experience with uh, Fall Out Boy, another band I never really got into, but I yeah. saw them open for Blink when they did their first reunion tour and like they had all their guitars were acrylic see-through with neon lights in them mm. and they're incredible musicians like the lead singer is an incredible singer and they were just awesome panic yeah. at the disco same thing and i missed that i haven't yeah. i haven't been in that situation in a while see it's stuff that bums me out because uh i feel like my relationship with live music is is a is a bit of a downer because uh i, know. I mean i have a nine-year-old i don't i don't get to right. go to do that kind of stuff a lot also being he's, he's gonna get there soon though uh, sure being six seven i know you're always i struggle with that and i i worry about that business i know uh i remember seeing the abbott brothers and they're like a killer live show yep. for that kind of music if yes. you're into that kind of music they put it I, I was impressed where i was like i don't know how they do this and then get on the bus and go somewhere and do it again tomorrow. Right. I would be laid up for days because they just put it all out there. But I got really annoyed with the people around me where I'm like, you paid a ticket to watch this show? You guys are just shooting the shit and having drinks? Fuck off. Go to a bar. I know. Uh, But So I get annoyed by that stuff. I also struggle because a lot of the music I like I'm like, man, it'd be great to see that band live, but I don't want to be in the group of, of people that listen to this band. Yeah, that's how yeah. I feel about Senior Discount, Chuck's band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't get it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to support such a toxic thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. You I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> I feel like the jokes <laughs> are fun to do, and like part of our built-in thing is like I sass you, and then you ego at me, and then I sass the ego at you, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. I never sass your stuff. You ever notice that? You do sometimes sass it. No, never. Never your I've never There's sassed a creative thing sass. you've ever done. You can never you can't name one. No, no, I don't go after your creative things. You just did. I just did. He did. And then I yes ended it. Okay. Two sasses. I'll sass you directly yeah. and what isms that maybe <laughs> could be worked on. But other, see, like I'm doing it now. But I want to be clear, like it's yeah, jokes. Of course. These are yeah. these are of jokes. Course. The real yeah. ones I put in my blog, and you can follow that. Yes. At what's Chuck's problem? dot org <laughs> so now uh, we're gonna buy it, by the it, way we're legally required it, yeah. to buy these oh now. no <laughs> three for the day oops.com that's three yeah. uh, it's uh it's oh a god someone owns uh, six million oh <laughs> shit <laughs> try, try add a letter add a poops.com <laughs> oh. Oh. it's even more expensive I, uh, oh, my, 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 by, my, by the way uh, what's what's chuck's problem dot org uh, the fact that it's a non-profit that's what i'm saying because <laughs> listen i'm not here to make money i'm yeah. here to solve this fucking problem <laughs> yeah. yeah uh but no so uh uh, uh that part of, of live music is a, is a tricky one for me here's my new issue that i have with seeing live bands uh, like things that i like and this is a new rub for me is it the bulging disc i got it yeah, <laughs> uh, they're great. I love them. The Bulging Disc is so good. I like so their good. early stuff. Oh, you would. I do you prefer would. their early stuff. Their early yeah. stuff when they were funded by a mega corporation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, now they're, they're they're on their own and they're pursuing their own artistic vision. <laughs> yeah, get out of here with this bullshit. Uh, no, um, uh, two of the m- more recent bands that I've like really like fallen in love with yeah i feel like i go through a period of time where i'm like this is what i'm gonna listen to this summer i fucking love it right yeah uh the latest is violent soho i played a little bit of it for you guys loved it it's like dinosaur jr meets uh (laughs) that's my nickname for brad (laughs) (laughs) and it scares him (laughs) who's senior yeah yeah (laughs) if i'm junior (laughs) who's the third Uh, no, is uh, Violent Soho, Australian band. It's like 
post garage grungy thing dinosaur junior smashing pumpkins kind of thrown together kind of deal with a little bit of pop punk uh love it yeah, yeah. i was listening and listening and i started falling in and i'm like okay i'm gonna listen to this album i'm gonna listen to this one they have mm-hmm. four albums uh and i'm like they're really great let me look up some more stuff about them yeah right yep that's what happens when i fall in with sure. a band uh look it up and i'm like oh cool they are on hiatus mm. an undetermined period of time they've kind of broken up yep right are they pretty new four albums yeah i was gonna but, say you're right but, like, but i, I, I saw like the video 2009 or so i think you felt you sent me a video and it felt like they were young and it's pretty current. That's that's what I guess what I'm thinking. I don't know if I sent that. Were they like I'm in a sure. cornfield or something, or like on a on a porch, uh, or like an old house? There's no corn in Australia. Oh no, are you're you're talking about um, uh, a different band. Oh, interesting. Two girls. Yeah, one cup. Hmm. I love this band. <sighs> I mean, the aesthetic is cool. I've listened to the music. Uh, can I be honest with you? I don't get the music. They took my I idea. Get, yeah, but. <laughs> I, here's my problem. I can't understand the lyrics. I think that's the problem. I don't know what they're saying. I don't yeah. know. It's just all Wah! to me. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You're thinking of uh, the band that I am now drawing a blank on. Uh, I thought and, it was Wet Leg, but... Wet Leg, yes. Thank you. Oh, it was Wet Leg. Was, yeah. No, I'm Vi- talking Violent about... Soho. Oh, Violent I Soho. see. I see. Yeah. Wet Leg is... Uh, yeah, Violent Soho is, is the band you showed us in the car. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, really enjoy them, but they're on like a... They're basically broken up. Yep. And then this other band, uh, Level Up, LVL space UP. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're from New York. Yeah. And I loved their whole thing as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a couple albums, but really the last two were like the ones. Yeah. And that was like a couple summers ago where I was like, I fucking love this band. Yeah. It's got that same garage, post grunge, fucking great 90s thing yeah real chunky buzzy guitars mm-hmm. yeah and like a laid back vocalist i'm there yeah, yeah. give me that give oh, me yeah. that jay mascus all day long uh and i'm like this is awesome uh i fell in I, I i fell in love with them like right when their second or the 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 last album that they put out came out okay i'm like this is awesome can't wait where are they playing i want to see where they're playing i might go see them live oh they broke up this year, right now, cool. So that's what I've been into lately. They say it's yeah. because of me. Yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. Oh, I found it. It's it's over now. Yeah. You know that Jay Maskus, uh, do you remember when we did our Christmas podcast a couple of years ago at the Galactic Theater? Yeah. He came there and performed like last year. Damn. Isn't that I missed ridiculous? It. I missed like, it. Think of that venue. Yeah. Crazy. I, I love it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, um, I I totally get what you mean. It's just tough because I'm like, oh, I wanted to see that. Oh, I wanted to see that. No, we got we to go to like a show where you can be like side stage. Yeah. Like I we can, can do like. I can triple down on my theory of the stuff I like. Just it splits up and it's a dark version of it. <laughs> Frightened uh, Rabbit, star- one of my favorite Ugh, bands. I know. Saw them live a few times. Frank Turner talked about it at the met, show. Yeah. Met Scott Hutchison. Such a great guy. My wife and I have uh, a lyric engraved on our wedding rings from him. Yeah. Yep. And I have a guitar pick from him. And he's such a nice guy. And he killed himself. Yep. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. And it fucking sucked. Yeah. It yeah. Was, that was that was the first musician that passed where I was like, oh, I oh, I'm gonna cry a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. That was that was the first one. Uh, you know, when when people were like with Bowie or or whoever, you know. Right. Um. Yeah. It, yeah. It sucks. I was gonna say. Um, Don't let me get into a band you like. That's <laughs> my point. Last thing I was gonna say about this is just uh, the, the only show I forgot to mention that I really wanted to mention was uh, the Blink One Eighty Two show that I got went to this year. It was one of those situations where it was when Ticketmaster introduced their dynamic pricing thing. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I'm not gonna see Blink One Eighty Two play together for the first time in a decade or whatever it is on this tour. And I luckily a, a listener of Tuesdays with Stories saw me talk about it online and he was affiliated with the band and he got me in. Mm-hmm. So me and my cousin Christian went, which is the band that made me start a band and their live show, this tour, it's, it was incredible. And it was like moving and the way that people responded, yeah. the way that they talked about each other, even, you know, there's, there's a lot of drama that has happened in the band and it was kind of talked about on stage at one of the shows mm. because Matt Skiba from another band I love called Alkaline Trio he took over as guitarist for Blink when Tom was not around. And at the uh, the recent show in Chicago, they talked about Adam Willard, who is the drummer for Against Me and the drummer for Boxcar Racer. Yep. I mean, uh, for Angels and Airwaves, Tom's other band. 
and they just openly spoke about the relationship between Matt Skiba and Tom DeLonge, mm-hmm. like Tom and Mark and everything. Amazing. I kind of love that punk rock has gotten less popular in the past 20 years. Sure. And now the bands are working together more. Mm. Like Alkaline Trio, Against Me, Bok, you know, Box, all these different things. Bok Choy. <laughs> I didn't mean Bok Choy. I mean uh, Angel and Airwaves. And MXPX, Goldfinger, and Real Big Fish. Yep. Um, but all that stuff was very special. And just the other day, and this is the last thing I'll say, that I, I'm just like thrilled about, Green Day announced they're doing uh, they're releasing a 30th anniversary of Dookie, which is a really important album. Yes. It's, it's like one of the most important albums in musical history. It's like one of the most, you know, it's up there with like kind of starting punk punk rock being really famous in the 90s. That's the the main album that made that happen. Yeah, I think I, yeah, that's a that's a curve towards like pop punk kind of becoming Yeah. The thing. I, I, yeah. I think punk just punk in general, I think. Sure, they're sure. just, you know, the idea like of I mean, one of the most important albums of all time. I don't know. I don't know oh, about yeah. that claim. I think so. Of all time. Well, what? So what's up there? Out. Let's see. Beatles, Elvis, Beethoven, <laughs> album. Yeah. <laughs> Tchaikovsky. That's not an album. That's a, I. You can buy an album of Tchaikovsky. It, I think that people tend to not realize when things are part of their lifetime how popular they are. But yeah, I think Dookie is up there. For sure. Yeah, no, I I agree. It's 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 one of the top albums for sure in terms of like pop culturally through yeah, through that period of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just when I hear like one of the biggest albums of all time, it's it's hard because I'm like for it's, anything. I think for anything, if you said that, I'd be like, yeah, you know, you know, what, yeah. I mean, what is that really? You want to know another one that's huge? What is it just like Thriller? And then, well, I was gonna say Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem's sure, second, sure, second yeah, album yeah, yeah. is like. He's the highest selling artist of the 2000s from 2000 yeah. to 2010. He beat the Beatles. The Beatles are number two. Yeah. It's, it is yeah, weird. They were, yeah, the Beatles. Uh, Elvis. Who? Jimi Hendrix. Yes. Led Zeppelin. I guess. I think so. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't to, think so. To me, if someone said to me, who is more popular, Aerosmith or Led Zeppelin? I don't know the answer to that. I guess Aerosmith. That's a hard question too, because when when we talk about popularity, you have to ask, you have to answer the question of like during that period or overall. I know. Have, how, how many roller coasters does Led Zeppelin have? Well, yeah, I guess because Steven Tyler. Yeah. Anyway, but anyway, they're re- we're releasing a, a new version of Dookie, and Dookie originally I think was like a twelve song album or maybe thirteen. Yeah. A fourteen. It's fourteen with a secret song, and their new version that they're doing. Yeah. Is five albums. It's the original album. The, the cassette demo they made beforehand, which has a bunch of songs that they released later in their career. Yeah. The four-track demos, which also has songs they released later in the career and songs from earlier in their career. Live at Woodstock, which was only... That was like a huge moment in pop culture for like that kind of thing. Yeah, the yeah. Mud thing that happened. Yeah. And then Live at Barcelona that year that's never been released, which is the whole album live there. And they're, um, they're naming them... There's Dookie, Ookie. It's crazy. Spooky. Yeah. So that... All together. Ookie. Yeah. So that cover... The Dookie cover, which I'm sure you've seen, yeah, yeah. which all the dogs and stuff. I had the album. So, so tape. I had the tape. I should be honest. I had the tape too. They're releasing all new vinyls. Mm-hmm. Each one has has that album that album cover with different versions of it. Yeah, like yeah. The the the, the, mud, the Woodstock one is all covered in mud. And yeah, it's, and yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, duct tape over it, written Green Day and stuff like that. I love it. It's just it, it's incredible, and I'm like, yeah. oh, it's just so much fun to be involved in this stuff again and feel like you're connected to it like sure. just, just the other day that concert like i'll be honest offspring is not an important band to me and to be really honest what offspring's offspring's an important band to me are they yeah well here's what's interesting in about high the school i was like a offspring kid. offspring is an excellent band but here's what's interesting that i always felt we talked about this a little bit already um I grew up in this punk rock scene, knowing a lot of the people in bands, dealing with them in different ways, and everyone has these different relationships to the big bands, mm-hmm. e- even the big bands like Rancid, No Facts, obviously Blink, Green Day, whatever. Offspring always fell outside the punk community, even though they were for sure a punk rock band. Sure, sure, yeah. And I don't know why that was, but I just never got so personally invested. They have a yeah. great album called Americana. It's one of my favorite albums. Hell yeah. And um, Live... They were incredible. Yeah. The the it was outstanding. The lead singer left the stage, and Noodles, who was the guitarist, like they had a big screen behind them, and they had a little drawing of Noodles, and he had the Mario sound, and he got huge, and he's like, "Little Noodles, fuck you! I challenge you to a guitar off," and he's like, 
big noodles, fuck you. And they had this big yeah, guitar off. And fun. I was like, this is incredible. After a song, the stage went dark for a minute, came back up, piano on stage. They did a slow piano version of one of the main Offspring songs. That's great. Going away. Yeah. I was like, even though this isn't like my personal, you know, feeling like I'm like getting back into like something that I was personally invested in for, for a long time. <laughs> yeah. It was like moving. The whole thing was very moving. Yeah, you man. Know? I mean, we, we talked about on the last episode the idea that movies have to be the biggest movie of all time or the best movie yeah, of all time. Yeah. But like, uh, similar to like, The Offspring can just be a good concert. Oh, they're just great. they're just yeah. a really good band. Yeah, and again, simple plan. Like, I'm not even a crazy fan of theirs, but I was like, this is they're so good. Yeah. One of the things that kills me is that. Uh, like I wanted the the push to see Abbott Brothers. Like uh, my wife and I liked them quite a bit. Uh, she's still like super into Abbott Brothers or whatever, but I'm like kind of waning on it. Uh, but uh, you know, one of the drives there was knowing that they were a great live show. Yeah. And the thing that kills me about this new uh, love of violent Soho is that in the stuff I was reading about how they're not doing anything anymore was they're one of the most popular Australian live acts. Of course, yeah. I'm like, oh, of good, course you're good, good. <laughs> good. And I listened to a couple of live tracks, and I'm like, oh, they're fucking killer. They sound like the album. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, exactly. That it would have been fun. Yeah, exactly. So uh, now hey, I'm worried about Wet Leg. Violent Soho, if you're fun bears, get, get back, back together. together. Yeah, that's that simple. Get back together, do a show in my living room or whatever. <laughs> I like that we all three went with this simple. Just get back together because yeah, Ray wants it. to see you. Just fall back in love. So this brings me into simple. a talking point that is a little hot button. Okay. But I didn't know if... Thank God. 46 minutes in. I Here we are. Right. We're, we're hitting our first I'm, talking point. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have... Uh, just spoiler alert here. I think at the end of this episode, I'm going to say, I owe you a story about this terrible show. Well... I'm not going to reveal the identity of this person because I think that's the best Brad. way to do it. It was Brad. It always is. Um, that's if, the end of every episode of Law and Order SBU. <laughs> 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 what a, Christopher Maloney looks over at one of the other ones. It's like, it was Brad. <laughs> and then they look over. Always is. <laughs> a close friend of ours, a young woman, very lovely. Uh, she brought up a, an interesting conundrum. Uh, the other day to us, and she asked our advice on it, and I yes. thought I would bring oh, it to the God. podcast. Oh, God, she's pregnant, and you don't know which one of you did it. Well, the way that I do things... Well, we, we have suspicions. She, she can't get pregnant from the way we do it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> plus, and then Brad be, goes, plus, I'm pregnant. Plus, it would be Brad that was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. That's when I... Yeah. We just did the same joke. Okay. Yeah. So oh. she said, I'm very flustered and frustrated. Okay. And I said, how come? And she said... Pourquoi? My mom is dating one of the Hells Angels. Okay. <laughs> and she said, I don't know what to do about this. Nothing. And here's the question. I thought the Hells Angels were good. Is that stupid of me? <sighs> they are a... They're not a singular thing. I think I'll start with that. Ooh. They're a group uh, and ultimately are regional things right. all under the larger umbrella. Right. Uh, so there are Hells Angels that have done not good things. Yep. There are also Hells Angels that have done good things. Wow, this is so interesting. There are chapters of the Hells Angels Brad said, that are like centered around fucking charity drives. That's what I thought. This is, That's not I, saying that they're the fucking uh, the best. They've had a very troubled history. There is for sure a lot of things that have happened. I do think a lot of it, again, is like a regional thing. Yeah. Because the Hells Angels is a motorcycle club. Yes. And they have chapters. Yes. It is similar to potentially like a franchised gang of sorts, right? Yes. Mm, However... Like an Applebee's gang. Yeah. They are terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, the Applebee's, Applebee's gang. The Applebee's is so much worse than the Hell's Angels in my eyes. I, yeah, for sure. You know what's They're weird about fries. the Applebee's gang is like you'll have a gang fight with the Applebee's gang in like Buffalo, mm -hmm. and you're like, I fucking totally fucked that guy up. I glassed him in the face. Mm. But then you'll go to like Des Moines. Did yep. they want to call us like the Crapple Dumpling? Gang? <laughs> and that was that was one of your suggested names. And you'll have the fight. Yep. And you're like, I think that was the same exact the same guy. guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, no, sorry, just are... real quick, just, like killing good in the neighborhood. I'm just trying to figure out work. a blank and good in the neighborhood <laughs> for, sure. for the Applebee's gang. So, so for me, I was TGIF. The gang is fighting. Oh, I immediately was like, oh, I thought that they were kind of like the Punisher. Where he's like, I want to do good things, but I no, just so have the a- Hell's Angels are real. We'll start there. Well, I, so I thought he's like he wants to do good things, but mm-hmm. he has a you know a way of doing it that not everyone agrees no, with. No, because there's there there can be a chapter of the Hell's Angels where it's like, hey, we're just uh, we're just some middle aged guys that like to go out and do our thing, uh, and I think that does exist somewhere in this, right? Wow. But there are also uh, chapters of the the Hell's Angels that are. A gang. They're just a fucking gang. And they've been involved in stuff. Historically, they've been involved in quite a bit. Some drug run-in, some selling, some gun run-in, some money stuff, some gang stuff. All the gang gang things. Also, they never put their shopping carts back. (laughs) Oh, no, no. That's that's a chapter thing. You'll get jumped if you don't put your cart (laughs) back. Now, normally here, from a comedy perspective, I would tell you Brad's opinion through my filter and make Uh it insane. Yeah, I'm gonna let Brad speak because I don't want to be the reason he gets killed by the Hell's Angels. So I, I'm gonna after you do that, mm-hmm. I will reveal why I know things about the well. There's a, there's, a, there's part of the story too that will continue. I, I, I yeah. said uh, I understand your flusteredness, uh, our our friend. I I have not heard of Hell's Angels doing charity drives uh, like Ray Harrington has. Okay, so here's what I said. I said. The Rolling Stones trust them. That's <laughs> hold on. I thought like I thought they were the type that's like, oh, there's a little kid going to court because his dad molested him. We're gonna go to court and like escort him to his house. I that heard is stuff also like that. Happened, yeah. There, there are organizations. I don't think they're affiliated with the Hell's Angels. I, I that's that could be true. But here's what's funny. So. I was like, I thought the Hell's Angels were good. And the whole car is like throwing banana peels yeah. at me. They're punching me. I will say they things. don't fall. If you had to do a little <laughs> Lady of Justice uh, 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 okay. scale, yeah. it's not, It's not. oh, look, it's so heavy on the good side. <laughs> oh, so, so here's what happened. So we're all arguing about it. I'm like, they're good, you know, whatever. And uh, my parents call. Uh-huh. And they put them on speaker. It's my mom and There's my dad. There's Hell's Angels here, and they're taking <laughs> you know, like, over the house. <laughs> And they're driving around the walls. Yeah. My mom is like, my mom's like, hey guys, just wanted to check in. You know, she does it, whatever. A good my dad's like, hey. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, where are you guys fall the Hell's Angels? Are they good? And my mom and dad are like, like, no, they're not good. What do you mean? Are they good? No, absolutely no. And they're just like throwing, just like this guy. Then three seconds of silence went by. Then my dad goes, I mean, maybe they're good. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is where I got it from. Yeah, 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 yeah. The original Devil's Ad. I really yeah. like Dinosaur the... Dinosaur Jr. I like the idea... <laughs> I, I like the idea of you calling and asking that question and your parents immediately assuming, oh, Chucky, don't join. Please don't join. And you're on the phone and you are you have half of a vest on and you're like, oh, he's got, he, what? He, he's got the clipboard and a what pen. Is this? And he's like, should I? <laughs> okay, I, I'll ask. My mom wants me to say, "What's Altamont?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, it was funny, and uh, she, you know, she, the the young lady who po- posed the question, she's very poised funny. Poised it. Poised it. Poised Posed it. Posed it. it. Posed it. What is poising? Poise. No, like poise. This? I don't think I'm poised. Poise is what you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, I poised? Uh, Ready to attack? No, that's no, that's. I, I don't know that I've ever heard. Poise. I, first I of all, you, like can, a, you can be poised. I've never heard of poise as a verb in and of I itself. I thought that no, a, no. A, a panther could be you can could have, poised. You can have poise yeah. or be poised. So the panther is poised? Yeah, it could be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? We've said it enough. It doesn't mean anything in no. my mind. So anymore. she was, you know, she's quite flustered. She believes. Poisoned. You know, she doesn't, she's not uh, psyched about the this new development. Yeah. And I thought they're more like a group of punishers. Hmm. They're just doing good stuff, but you know, maybe in a way that Spider Man wouldn't. Agree I mean, with. a group of Punishers is bad. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like, well, maybe not all like of them. In, like in in fictional world, like comics and TV and movies and things. Like, yeah, beat up the bad guys, sure. But like in real life, like people are people. You know what I mean? Mm. I see. So maybe don't take the guy like robbing a convenience store and like smash his head through a brick wall or something. I That's will. I will also add help. that that our friend who is concerned about her mother's dating life, yeah, 
knows the background of this specific Hells Angel, and it is not a great background. Oh, see, that's different. And yeah. she said that's her mom different. bangs a lot of hobos. Like, I'm not even, <laughs> she, <laughs> not even joking. She did say that. What? <laughs> she said her mom, like, is his, she the apple dumpling? <laughs> Your mom gives like blowjobs and like she's banging hobo. <laughs> hobo blowjobs. It was, it was a jobs? very weird conversation. <laughs> Hoblos. <laughs> she, she called them hoblos. Yeah. <laughs> she she said her mom. What, what, what did she like to do? Oh, Just get like so trains got, by hobos all the time. No, 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 no. She did no, not no, no. Say See, it. that's not no, no. Hobos hop on trains. That's maybe they what do I not heard. Run train. Do you have a bindle? Put on your bindle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she said her mom has made love to a lot of hobos, and that's why that she attracts different. Who is this person <laughs> that is just like <laughs> my mom sleeps with hobos? Oh, uh, maybe I'll have her with in... indigent homeless rovers. <laughs> maybe I'll have her pen a letter anonymously. Yeah. And... <laughs> Pen that letter, <laughs> please. Send it in, and she can explain what her mom, where, where it begins and ends. No, and I'd like to know. For specific... now, I'd like to know. Now, this is confusing me. It's. I don't like it. Yeah, it's, I'm not. Like li- it. I'm not. I'm not lying. No, this this was a no, real conversation, I know. and I can only assume, given the two of you were witness to this conversation and were involved. And in she's it. a good, really good person, right? And but I can understand that this person's being kept anonymous. I can only assume, based on context clues, that this is somebody that. Chuck knows. Both of us know this person through Chuck. Through Chuck. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Ch- all I'm saying is Chuck's going to bring somebody in that's like, my mom sleeps with a bunch of hobos. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Anyway, so your mom is dating one of the Hells Angels. You said yeah. you have a specific history with the Hells Angels. Sure. You ready? Yes. My mom <laughs> oh my God. dated an ex Hells Ooh, Angel. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. So you are in the same shoes as this person. Yep. How does your mom feel about I hobos? I mean, my mom has not slept with any hobos. <laughs> you don't know that. She's hobo free, my friend. <laughs> okay. She's she's a hobophobe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate One it. One of us. One of us. <laughs> Google gobble. Google gobble. <laughs> you genius find it. I uh <laughs> I hate it because here's why I I hate it. Because when I do it. There is a little part of me that's like, yeah, <laughs> you made a good, bad joke. It's a little right? Chuck and Brad on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And then a disappointed Ray on yeah, your yeah, shoulder. Yeah. Two angels. Just looking down like Two that. hell's angels. Me yeah, yeah. The jacket. <laughs> so my- I, I, I'm dressed as an actual angel. I'm very confused by this whole thing. <laughs> by the way, we did come up with the idea of Brad having a group called the Heaven's Demons. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is really funny. Yeah, that is very fun. I like that. Yeah. Uh, no, so my mom, uh, uh, she dated a gentleman- who had been in his past okay. a Hell's Angel? Wow! So uh, the good ones. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. I hope. Uh, I don't know all the stories. Does he know the Rolling Stones? But, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, he knows who they are. Although musically, he was definitely involved, and I can tell you uh, some of these stories really quickly. So this gentleman, uh, my mom met uh, right before I went to college. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is that's the period of time. Uh, you know, it's early aughts. We're still reeling from the nine and the eleven mm-hmm. in that order. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> eleven nine, no problem. Yep. Nine eleven. Yikes! Watch out. Yeah. November ninth. Uh, <laughs> November ninth. <9th>, remember. <laughs> Oof. Um, but uh, <laughs> so uh, she met him uh, working together. They worked in a, a, a like home office of a jewelry company, mm-hmm. and his past was interesting right? right so like my my mom's uh fiance husband essentially right. right now uh is not the same gentleman okay um you know he's a great guy uh that my mom is with uh you know he's he's a really wonderful person he was in vietnam did the stuff you know what i mean that mm-hmm. kind of thing this gentleman that she was with previously also vietnam right Ooh, okay he, uh, he did a couple of tours of vietnam what side uh good side Good. Oh boy. Yeah. The right side. No. That's a, <laughs> what a thorny question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so he, his past is insane. I'm going to tell you some of the stuff about this hell's this particular ex hell's angel. Okay? Yeah. And like when I was hearing this stuff over, like that would trickle out over the time. I was like, this is fucking made up. This is bullshit. Right. 
the things you're telling me didn't happen, right? And I would say to my mom, like, this guy's a fucking pathological liar, <laughs> right? But then evidence was presented oh, okay. for, like, every single thing. And I was like, what? The, who, who are you and how are you yeah. in... Uh, southern Maine yeah. working at a fucking jewelry store. Mm. This is wild, right? Mm -hmm. He's like he does he does uh like intricate jewelry repair. Yeah, cool. Like that's his thing, right? Uh so he uh early on in his <laughs> life <laughs> he did commit a crime. Okay. Uh in the uh in the late sixties, early seventies. Probably framed. Uh he did it oh. and uh he was given the option of not no murder or anything like right. that, but was given the option do some jail time or go to Vietnam. Right. So he went to Vietnam. Wow. Did two tours. Had some bad shit happen there. Yep. I've heard the stories. Guess what it was? Vietnam. Yeah. Right. The Vietnam stories. Yep. That wow. You know. Would you rather go to jail or Vietnam? Uh. What now? do I? Now Vietnam. Yeah. yeah of course. For sure. Beautiful. Back Get a lot then. Of time. Back then. Jail me up, baby. Yeah. Really? Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I want to die with wet socks and sick. And get shot in a jungle. It's and probably hot fun to be had. And humid. The humidity. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the, the worst the thing humidity. about it. Humidity. <laughs> oh, it's so they're like, sticky. They're like, hey, listen, um, da, 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 da. you're gonna have to kill people. You're like, fine. Like, Whatever. You might kill your friends. Fine. Like you might get you, you might get killed in Whatever. the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a little humid. Excuse uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> how how humid is a little humid? Do you need anybody at the home office? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so he, he went and did that business, right? Right. Uh, left that. Um, he was a musician. Okay. Cool. Uh, he was a studio musician. All right. So he's, he's a cool guy in terms of creativity. He's on the right side of history, perhaps, according to Ray. Mm. Look, the, 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 the young American men that had to go fight in Vietnam right. they literally had no choice. Exactly. It was a draft. They, they didn't yeah. choose to go to so, war yeah, for the yeah, country. Exactly. Right. Uh, you know, there w there was, uh, yeah, it's it's a tricky, in that tricky specific dick. scenario. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so he was a bassist. Uh, he played bass, and do, he was do, do. A, a studio musician. Right. Um, so, like, he would tell stories once in a while, and I'd be like, you're full of shit, right? Like, right. Just, this guy is a liar. And then, like, evidence, like I said. Right. So one of his stories that he would tell, I didn't believe until he gave me, uh, or no, until I went and found uh, a, a vinyl LP of this album. Okay. And flipped it over and was like, oh, okay. Uh, he was a studio bassist and uh, the Eagles okay. at the time, uh, their bassist left when they were recording an album. So he was the bassist on, uh, I want to say, the Desperado album. Wow. And, mm -hmm. uh, and hey, Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Like, yeah, what is this? The Hells Angels are good. Also, uh, when they were shooting the when they were shooting the uh, album cover, which is them dead, yeah, uh, with like lawmen. It was like an old cowboy album cover, yeah, yeah. with like lawmen in front of them. Uh, he was there for that shoot with other Hells Angels, and they were like, "Hey, you guys look like fucking outlaws." So. They dress them up, and he's in the album as one of the guys that was they're just, just like, killing. They're just like us having fun. He was a Hell's Angel. He had been in a chapter, uh, and that chapter, uh, he said, was you know not doing like they weren't drug running or dealing. Right. They were gun running or anything like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But he did say like you know, people knew people and people did things yeah. right like that kind of deal. Very, it, it was almost like. Things. It's almost like mobby, you know what I mean, yeah. like yeah. that kind of deal. That's what I think of. Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, it's it's sort of like that. Uh, he um, he had some great stories. Uh, you know, like the music thing was was fun. Oh, he yeah. He punched um, <laughs> Hitler. No, that's Captain America, not Punisher. Yeah, I was I was mixed those two up. <laughs> Um, uh, I just drew a blank on his fucking name. I, I everything's gone today. I, yeah. I was punched. I've been on Afrin for like mm. three weeks straight. You're Ooh, not supposed yeah, to. And I know. You're and addicted. Two, I know. And two days ago, I was like, no. Yeah. And by two days, Good I man. mean one, and then one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm on day two of no Afrin, and it is killing me. Yep. Yeah. We gotta uh, get you some. It, it's rough. Strap him. It's in. rough. Um. Uh. Uh. Ozzy Osbourne. There we go. He punched him in the face. Punched Ozzy Osbourne in the face. Wow. Because so, he bit the bat and he wants to protect the animals. That bat was one of my buddies. <laughs> that bat was a biker bat. That was an Let's original. A bat is a hell's angel. 
Yeah, it's a it is a bat out of hell. It's an I, angel. I mean, that, that one specific hell. bat is a bat out of hell. Meatloaf's bat is a bat out of hell. <laughs> That's you the get, one he bat. Are I you going to see a bat in heaven, Bradley? No, no bats go to heaven. <laughs> if you see a bat in hell, you know that heaven exists because they're up flying. I no, I will. Do you say, think a bat is a fallen angel? <laughs> <laughs> I think it could be. You know a what? No, no. Else. If a dove up in heaven <laughs> mm-hmm. does a bad thing, oh, okay. it falls and becomes a, a bat. bat. All bats are doves that did bad. All right, that they broke bad. You know, hells, doves break bad, become bats. They're hell's angels. Easy to remember. D b b b b b. So he's doing all this great stuff all over the country. So uh, yeah, so uh, uh, the the Ozzy Osbourne story is ridiculous. This is why I'm like, this man is a liar, right? Yeah. Because it's like, how did all these things right. happen? And then you get evidence back, and you're like, I guess a man lived this life. He um, uh, was not a Hell's Angel at the time. Okay. He wasn't even a mag- uh, musician. I almost said magician. <laughs> By the way, he was a magician. Yes. Uh, <laughs> By the way, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Guess what his name was? <laughs> David. Yep. Nickel field. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, no, so he was uh, working a construction job. Okay. Uh, and they were staying at a hotel. Like, you know how that happens, right? Yeah. Yes. And Ozzy Osbourne was touring mm. and was in the hotel. So they were out at the pool doing their thing. Right. And a girl ran out onto the uh, little balcony mm-hmm. of Ozzy Osbourne's room and was like yelling, like, right. help. Kind of yells. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, my uh, the guy I know, I don't mm-hmm. want to use his name. Right. Um, we'll call him. Elliot. And a couple other construction boys were like, "Well, that's not okay." Went up to his room. There was a guy at the door. It was like, "You can't come in here." And they're like, "The fuck, we can't!" Right. Yep. Burst in. Punisher. Uh, the girl was, you know, she was crying. She was upset. I don't know. I don't know. I have have no fucking idea. Right. Right. It sounds like maybe he roughed her up a little bit. Yeah. That's all I know. I. This is all hearsay. I don't know. Alleged. All alleged. 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 Uh, So Ozzy Osbourne apparently, from what I've heard, got in his face and was like, "Do you know who the fuck I am?" And he's like, "Yeah, you're Ozzy Osbourne," and punched him in the face. Okay. Wow. Pretty cool fucking story. I mean. Right? They're all looking pretty now good. Now listen, I'm hearing these stories as a teen, right? Right. Pre-college, I haven't been to college yet. Uh, we don't get, really get along, me and this guy. No. Hmm. Uh, because of your love of Ozzy Osbourne. Of course. <laughs> yes. And bats. Yeah. Uh, no, fallen no, doves. He likes bats. <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, Ozzy likes bats too much. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, delicious. He wants to get in is there. That a, is that an urban myth? Is it a wife's tale? No, I, th- I think he did bite the head he off. The bat. It, was, it yeah. was an accident, though. Yeah, he he thought it was fake. Yes, yes, yes. yes I don't yes. know if I could pick up a real bat and think it's a fake bat. I don't know that I could either. <laughs> but I also I also don't know that I would uh, snort a line of ants. Yeah, I also don't <laughs> think he had a lot of time. It's not like he picked it up and was like, anyway, so. What I was doing, it's blah, 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 blah. It's an urgency miscommunication. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, like that. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh wait, you know? Oh, oh shut <laughs> up! So you, so you think, you think it doesn't really make sense that it's fake? You think it does make sense that it's fake? Yeah. That he thought it was. Fake. No, I, I said I, 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 I mean, somebody threw it on stage and he thought it was fake, and so like. As a goof, yeah, like any of us would do, he bit the head off yeah. this this warm I think, bat. Yeah. I think when you're, I think when you're on stage in that moment at that time, I think there's a lot of things that just you do. He really thinks that could have happened. Do you think that could have happened? I, it seems weird, but I, I think there were substances in Ozzy's body that. Ah. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you had snorted the ants, maybe you would bite the bat. Yeah, probably, <laughs> almost certainly. It's like that. That's children's why I book. stopped snorting ants. Yeah, because I was biting. Too too many bats. It's that old children's book coming back again, the yep. one we all read in the early 90s, late yep. 80s. Yep. You know? Swallow the fly. The, you snort the ants, you bite the bat. <laughs> if you give a mouse a line of ants. If you give a mouse a line of ants. <laughs> to snort. Yeah. I don't know why he snorted the ants. I guess he'll die. Shut up! <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so, uh, you know, like, these stories are ridiculous, yes. right? And I was just like, this is all horse shit. This yeah. is all a bunch of 
Hooey. Right. But then I saw the album. I'm like, that's him. That's yeah. him. His name is there, and I I recognize him. Uh, you know, so like his storyline of what the the Hell's Angels were doing, and what I understand of them was, uh, it was almost more. And granted, this was out on the West Coast. All of this stuff took place right. in okay. like California. Looser rules. Well, that's where. I think the chapters operate differently. I think depending on where the Hell's Angels are, they they operate differently. Sure. Um, and Me too. Uh, you know, in in from what I understand of his group, it felt more outlaws than anything. Mm, okay. It felt like, more like a vigilante Western. of some kind. No, no. You keep bringing in this weird like <laughs> vigilantism, yeah. the Punisher, and stuff like An that. Outlaw. If, if the Punisher, an outlaw is not a vigilante. If, if a anything, Punisher... a vigilante is going to get the outlaw. And I'm wanted, wanted, dead or alive. That's an outlaw. Yeah, Punisher would sing that happily. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would just be into it. Yeah, uh, but no. So uh, it, it, that's the vibe I got. A lot of like, I'm trying to remember one of the stories. I don't want to say too much that I misremember. Right? Sure, I don't want to do that. that. But there was stuff like, uh, you know, this person. Uh, their husband. I don't want to say too much. So maybe as an example, uh, one of the stories I may have like heard in some way was maybe let's say someone in the family, uh, not a hell's angel, but a woman that's like a sister or something yeah. like that. Their husband was like abusive and mm, bad, uh, and maybe needed the hell's, punishing. Yeah, maybe the hell's angels went and paid him a visit. That's what right? I think he's doing. Maybe and that got guy got him into counseling. Maybe that guy upped the ante after that with the seems the like, lady. Seems like an odd choice. Who she, he, maybe he was mad uh, oh, about okay. the uh, yep. angels, and then maybe the guy went away. Gone away. See, there's good. It's good and to do stuff like that kind right. of stuff. That's would positive. Happen. Now, it's all insane. Yes, I am a man living in 2023. You sure are. And it is wild to me to be like. We need more people like that. My mom was dating this guy. Yeah. With this past, but pasts are pasts, and I also feel a weird level of like. If you were around in the 60s and 70s and shit, like post-Vietnam and all that stuff, it to me, it just feels like a different world. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that outlaw mentality that was happening out there during that time, mm -hmm. it's different. Is it? Is it they're 100% bad? I don't think so. You know what I mean? I think there's bad things that happened, but there's such a big, wide scope of, right. of who's involved and stuff like that it gets very it turns very like sons of anarchy yes right. you know what exactly. i mean where punisher. it's like it's the there's the same thing as the punisher <laughs> <laughs> it's, you, you, your honor it's the same thing as the punisher <laughs> i like how you just like hold up a punisher like <laughs> like oh it's action a, figure it's a doll <laughs> yeah it's a it's a homemade punisher doll yeah. but so it, it <laughs> It's his pillow pet, yes. of the Punisher. <laughs> Punisher pillow pet. Uh, I relate to the Punisher. I know you. I do. Yes, I know you yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of you being like, I'm all in on the Punisher, because like the first situation that came up, y your response would not be like, best. I, I guess I better kick that door down and bring justice to that person who's who's outside the reach of the law. Your reaction would be like. That guy's rude. I, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> that was what we did in that Starbucks guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I gave him a. He was like, I was like, there he is, and he's like, what did you say? I'm like, I said there he is. That's your level of the punisher. <laughs> is you rolling your window up quickly, and then me, re regular guy, is like, do you want me to go get the coffee? And you're like, no. I'm the punisher, <laughs> and so I will go. So I waited for him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Lip quivering. I'll go. He's drawing a skull on his t-shirt. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I'll... I'll get him. I want to have good wishes for this guy. You go in and you're like, can I have salt packets, please? Salt packets. And you rip them all open and you're holding them just in case. I'll, I'll throw, throw the salt inside. in his eyes. Ah, Punisher. Ah, You've been punished. I, I go, 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 go. I came in to see if you needed help. <laughs> <laughs> 
so so yeah the hell's angels uh i think are you know they do have a past of like a, a lot of stuff i think it's similar to when people talk about like the mob like who's you know you who cares? know no 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 that's not what i'm saying oh. but i'm saying like somebody who's like oh yeah you know my my father mm-hmm. you know my uncle he's in the mob he beat and, someone like, with blah, a blah, blah, wooden blah. that was on fire but there's always there's i don't know there's always story Nick shit Foley? That was my, oh. my grandmother grew up in detroit yeah. right detroit michigan like she was a child during the race riots yeah. in detroit it's tougher times and you don't even know what I'm saying. And I don't like this because it sounds like you're like, so she had to stand up for the whites. <laughs> Obviously. But no, there was a, there was this weird period. And, and like uh, she remembers where like neighbors were going to the door and being like, hey, shit's getting fucked up. And it's a street over from us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? And like her telling the story of, you know, their neighbor was black and they were friends and uh, her father like had a baseball bat and had to go out and make sure nobody came to the house and mm-hmm. nobody went over to the neighbor's house and all that stuff. I right? get it. Yeah. So it's tough because it's like there's so many parts of like historic history stuff in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like just people running with different people doing different things. Uh, so it is hard to say if the Hell's Angels. I don't think they fall on a side of good or bad. So she- I think there's plenty of bad within it but i think there are also like people doing good in there it's hard it's hard so, to she, so she's you know she there's hope for this young lady that we're friends with might be okay i mean her mother is sleeping with hobos <laughs> regularly like enough where it's like a character tree yeah 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 like <laughs> the oh, defining character tree <laughs> she has a rep for this, you know what I mean. Right. So, so that's something the, else. The hobo language uh, is like the little chalk marks on the fence of like, yes. oh, here's a cross. You have to, you can get a meal here, but you have to listen to a sermon. Yeah, this, and then this, just you know, boobs. And it's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. over to Debbie's I'll ask place. Her, she'll she'll pen a, a little scribe, and she'll let us know. She'll pen a scribe. <laughs> Could she also scribe a pen? <laughs> yeah. She can, and she'll give us the you know the full rundown. Maybe her mom could come on. I don't want yeah. that. Oh. Look, How long does that interview last? <laughs> so you fuck hobos, huh? Uh huh. I'd love to Thank talk you. about that. <laughs> Look, do you um, do you eat beans? Is that a stereotype? Is that a, is that an uh, like an uncouth stereotype of, of a banging, hobo? The beans. I think that banging hobos is normal and fine. I Hobo think, banging? Yeah, I think so. It's I, better than those bums fighting. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep them busy. Idle hands with the devil's playthings. <laughs> Look, I think, I think. The, yeah, famously idle hobos. <laughs> I think the important thing is that we're All not. They do is ride the rails. We're not accusing anyone from any group of doing anything wrong, <laughs> and there's no reason to take revenge on any of us. Although, if you do watch this episode or listen to this episode, you will clearly see Brad has a quote unquote bone to pick with those moto men. Look, I didn't say any of that in the section that, that we cut out of here. The cut out of this episode, nothing I said was bad you against said, any you gangs. Said, or- of course they're bad. Look what they did to that, that simple, innocent house party at the end of Weird Science. <laughs> I'll say, I mean, I'll say this. I think that the Hell's Angels are just a complicated people like anyone. Ray thinks that. Brad may need... Uh, t- somebody needs to teach him a lesson. <laughs> Rough him up. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, if anyone fits the description, all I'm thinking of is the biker that has like the bumper sticker or the thing on their helmet or their the back of their jacket that says, if you can read this, <laughs> the bitch fell off. <laughs> I just want to say that Chuck has long been on record of saying motorcycles themselves are too dangerous and should be illegal. So because if any motorcycle gangs have an issue with any fun bears, it's Chuck. I think the motorcycles are too dangerous because the cargo are too important to society. <laughs> That's not what you said. <laughs> I didn't say that. that if angel. Anyone we was, can't lose one angel. If anyone was ever made to sit in a sidecar... <laughs> It is Bradley oh, Roar. Oh, come on. With his goggles and his, and his like, <laughs> yeah, scarf the and scarf. the wear. Yeah. <laughs> is this what you motorcycle gangs do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I bring my own side gun. Yeah. You have a leather no- 
pilot helmet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got a pen and a notebook, and the notebook says the new Jack Kerouac, <laughs> and he's going to do that. I think here's here's another issue. Give I me think some bennies. Part of this is like, I grew up like a poor kid, right? Mm-hmm. I was in a different neighborhood, maybe, I don't know, than you guys. Possibly. Right? A little more shelter happening here, a little mm, more out in the elements for me. That's what's going on. So I think there there is an element of this that is hard for me to disassociate, like, Growing up, I, I I don't know, like that felt more reasonable to me. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I don't mean sure. the crime element or right, anything right. like that. Uh, like the movie, the movie Mask, not The Mask, right. but the movie Mask with Eric Stoltz and Cher. Yes. Great movie. Right. Uh, Cher, great performance. Right. Sam Elliott is playing a biker that is essentially a Hells Angels stand-in. Right. Right. That's how I view me too. the Hells Angels from what I know of people that rode motorcycles, Mm -hmm. people that were, you know, near or around that kind of thing. Yes. I agree. And again, I grew up in Maine. Right. Yeah. I don't think the hell's angels that are in Maine are like the hell's angels that are in fucking Mexico. Well, not Mexico. No, but close to the Mexican border. Sure. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's no Mexican hell's angels. They would be a different name. Probably. Diablo. I think just, <laughs> it's just Diablo, Chimichanga. <laughs> I I agree. I agree. But yeah, so, so it, me, it me is. Ray are on the I same see, side. I about see that as like a thing that's like you know a brethren of yeah. sorts, right. and I think it's tough when you have to look at motorcycle culture because there's also motorcycle gangs that we aren't talking about. Right. That some of them are the ones that are like we're gonna drive the kid to the court, mm-hmm. yeah. where his dad beat him up. Uh, there's other ones where they're the dad that beat up the kid. Yep. Mm. There's other ones where if the dad beat up the kid, the dad is gone. Yeah. The dad gets made away. Right. Mm, right. Uh, and then there's other ones that are just like, we don't give a shit about that. We're running heroin. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's difficult. It's really hard to say what's what. And I think in 2023, there are a lot of like mo- motorcycle clubs that are just like, yeah, we, we wear the vests and get in fights sometimes. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's the best we can do. Yep. Uh, I, I think it's tough. Was all of this to get to, did you guys want to start a motorcycle gang? Is that what this is? Why well, Chuck's got an electric bike, we figured. That's right. <laughs> and Brad <laughs> already has a Heaven's Demons tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like, why do I feel like this is the only motorcycle gang that you can hear them coming when you hear, ring, ring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you hear my laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> From a state Ooh. away. <laughs> uh, I, was in a, I was in a funny motorcycle gang. That's fun. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, That's like my backyard wrestling. Oh, I loved it. Are you kidding me? Uh, to this day, we still kind of reference it once in a while. Oh, this is the scooters. The scooters, the scooters yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. We were yeah. in the Pony Death Squad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's fun. And no joke, I would fucking do it again. Oh, I would yeah. start up the Pony Death Squad, get us a couple of scooters. Has there ever been a scooter gang? Is there a scooter gang? We that's can, pretty can good. Can we start a scooter gang? That's I think good. that's fun, bearable level. I think yes. that is a scooter gang for sure. Yeah. I think so. Nothing over thirty-five miles an hour. Mm-mm. No, it's, it's too scary. unsafe. Yeah, yeah. Anything that uh, that is there it has to have like a regulator or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we talk about how it's like super fast, and we have umbrellas in case it's there's a lot of sun <laughs> yeah. or rain. Right. Yeah. You never know with the rain. Oh, Brad's dad has a bunch of umbrella hats. We That's can true. Use. He has he has yeah. two, so we'll have to get a third. <laughs> I don't know, Brad. Do they like do that? sidecars on mopeds? <laughs> A sidecar to a scooter. You know what? What if me and you have a moped? <laughs> One, One moped, moped with two sidecars. No, no. Oh, because it would look One like a penis. One sidecar with two mopeds. Ooh. <laughs> In between. Oh, the lucky it's Pierre just, of it's mopeds. It's just a car at this what point. What happens if you guys go in different directions? <laughs> I just keep going straight. <laughs> That's so funny. I can picture you with the gla- the goggles, the aviator goggles, and you're just in it like this. And then once in a while, like, <laughs> like we'll be like, Brad, coffee. And he'll be like, <laughs> and just reach up and hand it's, it it's, over. It's you guys driving down a hill towards the ocean. <laughs> And Ray's like, we got to go to the right. And Chuck's like, I need coffee. We got to go to the left. And Ray's like, there's better coffee this way. I'm going this way. Well, I'm and, going this way. And you split off. And I just continue going. And it's it's yeah. an Ernest P. Worrell yeah. moment. I think you I think you skid across the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a little island in the di- distance. And it has the circle go after you. And it says the end. No, 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 no. <laughs> he skips along the water. You, he thought for sure he would die. Yeah. Right? Skips along the water. It slowly is. Now it's just drifting. Right, yeah. it's drifting forward. <laughs> you see the island, but the island says, 
like stay out, <laughs> violent, like sexually violent lepers. Yep. Right, and you're just drifting towards it, and you, it's just you gripping the edge of the sidecar with the goggles still on, and you go, "Oh boy!" <laughs> and then it, and then the, the Looney Tunes circle out. There's no sexually violent lepers. I'm floating. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got. I'm glad I got away from these guys. And then you hear two jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. Oh man. Uh, I I would say I would like to revise my initial statement when mm-hmm. I said Brad Coffee. I think in a very Wes Anderson style mm-hmm. shot. The shot is the two mopeds with the car in the middle. Okay. We're going, right? And <laughs> Chuck is just like protein, right? And yep. then he gets a protein bar slapped in his hand. Choose it or or beef jerky. Yep. I think beef yep. jerky would be better. And I go coffee, right? And yep. that's and then it's a shot of you with a full oh, yeah. like espresso machine <laughs> and <laughs> doing that stuff. Yeah. And then you hand me the little cup and I'm driving and I go <laughs> and sip on the cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm, too hot. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's so fun. Yeah. Oh god, I gotta steam the milk. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Accelerate! And I just throw the steamed milk in my own. The face. milk, it's steaming me. Hey, hey, Learn how to do a wheelie. No. <laughs> but yeah, that's fun. Uh, so yeah, the the I don't know what the point of the thing was, but the <laughs> Hell's I Angels don't, I don't know are there was, but we are gray area. We are up against it time wise. Hell's Angels are gray area. Okay, I think that's that's fine. But your friend sounds like the Hell's Angels are. They might be the least of her problems. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a leak in that house, but like, it's also on fire. <laughs> it's also a flaming She'll home. Describe. Okay. She'll do it. She's very, she's very fun. She'll yeah. do it. Butterfly in the sky. Yeah. I can pen a scribe. <laughs> That's what she says. Take yeah. a look. What's a book? <laughs> <laughs> That's what almost he pops in and says that. <laughs> a horny hobo. <laughs> horny hobo. He'll fuck anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed another priceless childhood memory today. <laughs> oh, that's so fun! Classic, that is fun, really fun, bearable. Oh. And listen, I owe you a um, mm-hmm. story about and a really Brad's bad show that too. I do. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Brad's yep. fads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad's, Brad's thirty fads? minute topic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Brad. that's right. You said you want you you came to us and proposed to us both that you wanted to start a segment at the end that was Andy Rooney esque. Yes. Where you get to make your complaint. Yes. And it was called Brad's Fads, yep. meaning like these things aren't going to last. Let's get rid yep. of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would actually be extremely open to letting that happen. <laughs> for, well, for sure. Per- perhaps on the next episode. Um, I bet I know what your first complaint is. <laughs> this. It's, it's going yeah. to be our openings. Um, I truly don't know how this was an episode. We, it, it was, it was real. It was a real ride. I've, I had a lot of fun. I have no idea yeah. what's happening. What would our fun bearable patch look like on the vest? I'm trying to make it podcasty. I will say, tell him Steve Dave has a motorcycle gang. Oh, I don't want to, you know. Well, we know who will fight. They oh, and it'll be like a real. It'll yeah, be, they're old. Montagues and Capulets for they're, you. Brian has a cane right now. Oh, we could fucking take them. Yeah, yeah, but if they have motorcycles and we have scooters, that's true. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because I think at some point the motorcycles become Somehow, a negative for them. Oh, okay. Somehow Walt's going to take over our podcast. We can corner yeah. very easily. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can they, corner they, quickly. They have Get'em. I don't know. He's got a shower knife. Yeah. He, so it's you against Get'em. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Battle of wits. <laughs> you have to take Walt. Or Quinn. I'll take Quinn. You're going to take we're, Quinn? We're friends, so I'm going to try to mend the fences. Okay. Well, who's getting Walt then? You take Walt. No, I don't want to take Walt because he's always been nice to me. Me too. Shit. Brian's nice too. Oh, okay. So you get get him and Walt. Okay. Uh And then, uh, do you really want to fight Q? No, I'm going to try to trick him into being friends because we're already friends. So it's like, oh, we're going to be one big gang. To be safe, maybe we should have Brad fight Q as well. Okay, that's good. So you have get him, Walt, and Q. Oh, then I (laughs) thought, yeah. Okay. And then Brian. Oh, you said he has a cane. Yeah, he's nice. He's uh, nice. Yeah, he's I don't. Funny. I feel bad about that. And I do like. I do like Brian. All right. So you get get him, Walt, Q, and Brian. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, then we'll get. We'll, meet we'll up get. Later. Yeah. We'll get. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk Absolutely. Later. We'll figure it out. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bring I appreciate. Coffee. Yeah. Um, well, folks out there, if you have uh, if you have knowledge about uh, motorcycle crimes. 
Contact us, funbearablepod at gmail.com. Or motorcycle nicenesses. Oh, yeah, 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 nicenesses. Uh, a lot of motorcycle nicenesses going on out there. Also, uh, I, I'm sorry if anything I said was uh, wildly inaccurate or anything. I'm going off of memory of we're just, we're what just, this gentleman... We're just joking and having fun and having our own personal anecdotes. Yeah. We're not saying we're experts. These are just personal things. I feel, can I be honest with you? This whole conversation, I'm going to you know, drop yep. the facade of, uh, of us goofing around and doing our goofs, right? Because we haven't told anybody this, but in real life, the three of us are actors. We're not friends. Right. We never see no, each other yeah, outside yeah. of this. Mm-hmm. We get our lines to read on this show. Right. I, uh, I, I could have some words with the writers. Well, we've been having to come up with our own bullshit for the yep. last couple of strike, episodes strike, because yeah. of the strike. Yep. Yeah. And I think you can see it and yeah, feel it and hear it and know so it. Aimless, yeah. And smell it and touch it and taste it and eat it. Yep. Oh, and pass it mm-hmm. and miss it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> no, it, my issue is this my description of like the Hells Angels and like my mom dating that guy <laughs> who had that pass and stuff, it makes me feel like, I, like I'm the white trash on this podcast. Like I feel trashy. No, I don't think so. Because of how I viewed it. And part of it was not having a dad and seeing like Sam Elliott be a father figure in that movie, uh, yep. Mask, where like Rocky's real dad wasn't around. And so Sam Elliott's there kind of filling the role. And I looked at that. And I'm like, I wish I had a fucked up face so Sam Elliott would be my dad. You know what I mean? Like, you it, know it what, was a Ray? weird thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> If Laura Dern was blind, she'd be into you. I, hey, I was the first one to say I think the Hell's Angels are good. Yeah, so it's so. T- it is tough because like it's uh, I, it makes me feel like my I don't know my history is different than you guys, and I I grew up differently, which no, I did, I, but I, whatever. I get some stuff. Sure. Wow. Okay. Different day. Different day. I owe you a story about a bad show. As we knew it would end this way. Well, folks out there, thank you all so much for listening and or watching. We do... I I owe you a story about when I was a hobo for a year. (laughs) Sincerely (laughs) I owe you a story about when I was a uh, security guard for Amtrak. (laughs) And we found... Let me just put it this way. Sometimes you open a freight car and what you see... Have you ever heard of a rat king? Yes. It's when the rats, their tails get all tangled up and they become one amorphous entity. Yeah. The rat really? king. Really? Yeah. We saw one of those. Mm-hmm. And the best way I can describe it mm-hmm. is as a a woman king. Okay. Well, it was. A, this has been I know an, she was a mother. This has been another episode of Fun <laughs> And there Europe. were so many <laughs> tails all tangled up and they were hobos. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was a real linchpin. Real linchpin. Real lynched at both ends. Um, folks, this has been another episode of Fun Bearable. Uh, f- I'm Brad Rohr for Ray Harrington and Chuck Staten. Thank you so much, and we're sorry for being Fun Bearable. I'd say emphasis on the sorry this time. Oh, yeah, a lot of I sorry. I have a quick question, though. Okay. It is 2023. Yep. Where are the hobos? Oh, they're... they're, they're I know. I know there are unhoused folk there are yep. homeless people but i think it's probably she finding these hobos to sleep with i think she did it previously back now, when hobos were around and now she's so she was just like bumming around with like woody guthrie or some shit and and just was doing this yeah she had a, she had a this was during I, I, the, did, I already did a bindle joke so i don't have yeah. more stuff this was during the uh the depression right she had a big bowl for fingerless gloves <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Come on. I better think more homo stuff. She, uh, <laughs> a lot of cans. A lot of eating out of cans. cans a lot of that hats. kind of stuff. Cans yeah. and hats. Yeah. Hobo and the oh, goat. yes. <clears throat> yes. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if she ever ran into Puddinhead. <laughs> Another famous can for a hat kind of guy. Brad, come He's back. We were talking about a hobo sleeper. I, I have rehearsal. What uh, are you rehearsing? I've improv practice. Oh, well, you didn't yes and this.